SPA devices are all over the place. Memory chips, sensors, wireless transceivers, LCDs, and many other devices use SPA interface. Hi, I'm Rizwan. In this video, I'm going to talk about the SPA interface of ESP8266. So let's have a look into the things we're going to cover in this video. We'll talk about the SPA interface of ESP8266, obviously. The parameters you need to consider when using this interface. Connect a SP LCD with ESP8266. And finally, we'll write an example to initialize the LCD and fill the LCD with some color. The ESP8266 has two SP interfaces. One of them is used for the flash memory. Another one is available to the end user. The one that is connected to the flash memory stores the binary program. It is generally 4 megabytes of flash memory. Maximum 1 megabyte is used for the binary and you can actually use the other 3 megabytes to store text, images or any other things. We will look about those things later. You can see the pinout of ESP8266 here. The SCK or clock, MISO or master in slave out and MOSI or master out slave in are hardware controlled. We need to use CS and any other pin ourselves. Let's look at the LCD. The LCD is 1.8 inch LCD and the controller is ST7735. You can buy it for around five dollars. Uh, I'm using an LCD because it is easy to visualize the commands in action. This LCD uses SP interface. The pin names are on the back of the display. LED is connected to 3.3 volt. SCK is the clock. SDA is the data in, means MOSI of the microcontroller. A note is actually DC pin, that is data or command. Reset connects to 3.3 volt. CS is the chip select pin. Ground is ground and VCC is 3.3 volt. This is a 3.3 volt device, so you can directly connect it to a ESP8266 without any level converter. Let's connect the display with the board. The pin connection is given on the description. The VCC reset and LED pin is connected to 3.3 volt. Ground pin is with ground, CS to pin D8, DC to pin D4, SDA to D7, SCK to D5. All the connections are done. Let's look at the code and explain it. I have included the SPI library in the first line. I have named the pin D8 as LCD CS pin and D4 as LCD DC pin. I have done it to keep the code flexible. If I want to change the pin, then I just need to change it here. In the setup function, we have set up those pin as output. Then we have initialized the SPI hardware with spi.begin command. This command makes the MOSI pin output, MISO pin input, and SCK pin output. In the next line, we have set the bit order. MSB first means most significant bit first. If you look at the data sheet, you can see that in the SDA, D7 is going out first. There are two data bit orders in SPI bus. If D7 is going out first, then it is MSB. And if D0 is going first, then it is LSB. The SDA shows that D7 is going first, so the data order is MSB first. Finally, we have sent three commands and put some delay in between those commands. You can have a look at the data sheet for the command set. You can see that we need to keep DC pin low to enter into command mode. The CMD function takes a byte as input. The LCD DC pin is kept low, telling the LCD that it is a command. We are starting the SPI transfer when we are making the LCD CS pin low. Then we are transferring the data. We are finishing the transfer by making CS pin high. You can see the LCD is initialized. 
we have made another function that writes data to LCD we are just filling the LCD with color the data command is similar to CMD function but only difference is that the DC pin is high you can try this program and play with different command sets from ST7735 data sheet like inversing the display changing the color of the LCD and so on this is a very basic introduction to the SPI bus there are around 20 commands related to SPI bus in ESP8266 you can have a look at those commands the link of this command set is given in the description hope this video was helpful if you have any question please leave it in the comment I'll try to answer it and I'll see you next time bye